Welcome, viewers and listeners, to The Health Revolution, the program that shows you how to have a life of vibrant well-being. In a world full of noisy health trends, we bring you clarity. In a sea of fads, we reveal the science-backed strategies that truly work. We explore physical strength, emotional resilience, and mental mastery. These are the keys to an enriched life. Join us for inspiring interviews with champions who conquered life's health challenges fueling your journey. Are you ready to unlock your potential to live with vitality and purpose? Then join the health revolution. I'm your host, Adriana Morrison, health and fitness expert, speaker, and a mom who understands. Let's embark on this transformative quest. Together, we're about to change the game starting now. The information provided in this show is intended for educational and entertainment purposes only. Viewers should use their own discretion and consult with a healthcare professional for personalized guidance and recommendations. Welcome everybody. You are watching The Health Revolution. I'm your host, Adriana Morrison, and we are so excited that you are joining us today. Please do not forget to hit the subscribe button in the manner in which you are tuning into us. We want to stay connected to you. Also, at the bottom of your screen, there is a tab for show notes. Don't forget that information. That is very relevant to what we are going to be talking about today. And so as we're getting into it, one of the things that we pride ourselves in discussing is the emotional resilience and the mental mastery that allows us to lead an optimal life. And today we get to talk about having healthy boundaries and what does this mean? What does this mean for mental health mindset? Where have we struggled and what can we do to get from where we are to where we need to be for that optimal growth? My guest today is someone who is extremely well-versed in all of this. She is bringing incredible information for all of us to learn from. First, take a look at this. Meet Cheryl Green, the how to say no expert. Cheryl is a renowned mental health speaker and author with a mission to transform lives by teaching the art of setting healthy boundaries. With a master's degree in forensic psychology, Cheryl combines her extensive knowledge with practical strategies to help individuals reduce burnout, improve mental health, and enhance productivity. As the author of the powerful book, You Had Me at No, Cheryl empowers people to say no without guilt, prioritize their needs, and create a balanced life. Her insights are invaluable for anyone looking to reclaim their time and energy. Cheryl's expertise extends beyond speaking. She has developed impactful workshops and retreats that delve into the importance of boundaries and self-care. Her engaging and compassionate approach has helped countless individuals break free from the cycle of overcommitment and stress. Cheryl's work emphasizes the significance of mental health in both personal and professional settings, providing actionable advice that leads to lasting change. Cheryl Green, welcome to the show. How are you? I'm Good. I'm so excited to be here. Thank you for having me. I'm excited that you are here. This is such an important conversation affects us all. So what does it mean to have healthy boundaries and why do we struggle as a society the way that we do? Yeah. So having healthy boundaries is really being respectful of how you treat yourself and how you allow other people to treat you. And I, I like to explain boundaries as a um, kind of a, a house. Think about a house, think about an apartment, whatever you happen to live in, there's something that is surrounding it. You've got a fence, you've got walls, hallways, um, maybe a moat if you happen to live in a castle. And it would be weird if people were to cross over those property lines without your permission, without checking with you first, right? It would be kind of funky if you came home and your your neighbors were having a party in your backyard, right? Because that is your property. That's where you reside. And boundaries are that line between where other people end and you begin and vice versa. 
So when we think about it, um, boundaries are really the way that we protect ourselves and by extension of ourselves, our stuff, you know, our material possessions, our thoughts and beliefs, our time, and also our family, you know, how we would allow people to treat our family. And, you know, it's so many people grow up in an environment where boundaries aren't discussed, they're not taught, and to some degree, they're not allowed. And think about it this way. If, uh, if you grew up in space, right, and you have never been to Earth, you've never experienced gravity, nobody has ever talked to you about gravity. I should say you grew up in outer space. Um, then when you get down here, you're going to be like, what is going on and what is holding me to the floor, right? Because you've never experienced it. You don't know what it is. So here we have all of these people, me included, that grew up in homes um, with families that I I'm not trying to blame parents here. They probably didn't know any better either, right? And it's hard to teach something that you don't know yourself. So you grow up in these conditions where you don't know what boundaries are. You've never heard them. You've never been encouraged to set them. And you get into adulthood and they don't just show up overnight. You don't turn 18 and get, you know, your ability to rent a car. Maybe that's at 25. Your ability to vote and this like education on boundaries. It doesn't happen overnight. So that's why people are challenged with them is because honestly, we've just never experienced them before. Thankfully, that doesn't mean that we can't. So why do we struggle so much over time? And, and what has been the trends that you've noticed that you meant you mentioned that parents you know they they've done their best but obviously as we're moving through time you know we we learn what to do and what not to do what's been our struggle in society what do you think the biggest the biggest areas why it, it's still an issue today uh, why we've struggled i'm gonna jump in here and say that women struggle more than men I'm not saying you guys don't have problems with boundaries. I'm just saying that women probably experience it more. And it's a cultural thing. You know, most most girls are, are brought up that you're supposed to smile and be sweet and be cute and be quiet. And um, that is not conducive to healthy boundaries. You know, we're here to make everybody else um, happy and comfortable. And if you've ever had someone come up to you and go, you'd be prettier if you were smiling. Nice. <laughs> okay. You know, we get these we get these messages that we are actually here for other people. We're actually here to um, make other people happy, to care for other people. And again, I'm not saying that men don't receive this as well to some degree, but I think it's a lot more with women. Um, so we've got these messages coming from society, possibly coming from our parents. We're getting a lack of education from our parents. And then we're probably dealing with our own, you know, self-esteem issues. I'm still waiting to meet somebody who doesn't have any self-esteem issues, who has like the best self-worth on the planet. Um, you know, we've all got that, that insecurity and, um, many of us, we want to be liked. We want to be accepted. We want to be brought in um, to, to the tribe, as it will. And, you know, I made this point in the book that deep down, whether it's conscious or it's never conscious, um, we're afraid of being eaten. You know, if you look at this from a, an anthropological standpoint, if people don't like, if you don't do what you're supposed to do, then people don't like you. If people don't like you, they don't want to be around you, which means they cast you out from the tribe. And if you're cast out from the tribe with that lizard, you know, paleolith paleolithic brain, that is not easy to say. Um, with, you know, using that brain, we have this fear like nobody is watching my back. I'm going to be, you know, dinner for a passing wildebeest. And we've still got that brain, even though, you know, we know better. I, I've never heard of a wildebeest attack recently, but, you know, we've still got that brain and it's a hop, skip and a jump from they're not, I'm not going to do what they say. So they're not going to like me 
all the way to mm, I'm going to be eaten. You know, one of the things that I wonder is, as you're pointing this out, so women more oftentimes than men do struggle with boundaries. And then you talk about cultural, uh, just uh, just cultural differences and maybe cultural trends, which I think both hold validity with why, you know, why this is an area that that isn't that's a little bit of an obstacle. So can you talk a little bit about the, the level of progressiveness we've had through the decade? So like, say we take this past century. How much of what's happened in in society? So, you know, in, in the front page news, when the world is changing, you know, what? How big of a difference did it have for people who struggled with processing how to handle change, and then the impact it has on boundaries? You know, I think we've we've made a lot of um, steps forward. I, I think COVID especially was a big awakening for so many people. Um, unfortunately, I think we've also made a lot of steps backward. And I don't want to get political or anything like that. But from a purely boundary standpoint, um, what's happening with women's health care rights and, you know, with the we no longer in most states have control over our bodies. So that is a huge boundary issue. Um, that is literally somebody coming in and saying like, no, I'm gonna tell you what to do with your body. Um, and it's one of the main boundary categories. <laughs> so yeah, we've made some steps forward for sure. Um, you know, we're, we're, we're encouraged to be more vocal. We are, um, we're encouraged to speak about mental health more than we ever have been in the past, in my opinion. Um, so we've, we've got those, those moving forward, like we're getting there, like we can talk about anxiety and we can talk about depression and we can talk about burnout and it, it's accepted and it's, you know, entering popular culture. And then on the other side of it, we've got the, um, yeah, you don't actually get to, you don't actually get to make decisions about your own health. Um, so, so does part, so part of that, it, it seems like then getting to the definition of and agreeing to what the definition of boundaries are, what, where has been, where has it been a point of contention to define what is an acceptable boundary and what's not? Cause I wonder if, if from how you're, how you're presenting, it, it seems like we're just, it's, it's not agreed upon. And I'm, and I guess it's not agreed upon in so many different areas, but where does the, why is there such a debate with defining what boundary is and how do you define it? Let me think about the why is there's such a debate. Um, you know, how I define it is how you allow people to treat you and how you treat yourself as well. I mean, there's, there's self boundaries, but I, I, I always like to err on the side of a hundred percent like radical responsibility. You know, you're, you're, it is, um, uh, how do I explain this? Um, it's, it's not how people treat you. It's how you allow them to treat you. If you understand the distinction there, um, because ultimately in most situations, and I am not talking about true victims here. I always want to clarify that. Like if you are a victim of a crime, like I don't want to talk about that, but like you, um, you are responsible for making the decision to walk away. You know, if you're in an unhappy relationship, if you're in a bad, uh, you know, toxic work environment, ultimately you have the power and you have the responsibility to walk away. So that's why I always make that distinction between it's not how people treat you, it's how you allow yourself to be treated. Because as soon as we say how we how people treat us, we're kind of giving away that power and we're giving away that strength that we have to set boundaries and to say, I'm not cool with how you're treating me. So you either get no access or you get limited access. So then it seems like sometimes cultural, cultural tendencies or, you know, that, that, that I, I would assume plays a bigger role than we realize. So maybe that what's, uh, what's pressed upon us growing up in our, uh, just our cultural affluence, how much of that is, is, has too much of a say 
in the type of boundaries we need to appropriately have. Yeah. So depending on culture, depending on how you grew up, that's obviously going to be different. It, there, there are cultures where um, arranged marriage is commonplace, that that's the thing. There are cultures where um, children are children until they're much older and um, they're always kind of responsible for answering to their parents. Um, I have not dived into that from a, you know, research perspective. Um, mostly I've focused on American culture and how the average American is raised. Um, it's, it's going to differ depending on where you grew up and what kind of um, values, you know, sometimes family is above absolutely everything above, um, you know, personal, um, personal responsibility and, and just, I don't know how to say that, but um, if you just think about like my big, Greek, my big fat Greek wedding, you know, think about that for a moment. Like that was, that movie was really like pointed out how so, for some cultures, the personal life is not personal. You know, you've got all of these parents, all of these family members, well-meaning, loving that have their nose in every bit of your business. So Boundaries are going to be different for everyone. They're going to be different for every culture. It's it's not a one size fits all, um, but it is a very personal decision as to what you are and are not comfortable with and what you will and will not allow. What what really fascinated you to dive into this space and study it and hone in on it and and use this as a basis of working with others? What led you to really dive into boundaries? 40 something years of having garbage ones. Um, <laughs> so, so, you know, it's funny. They always say that um, when you go into psychology, into any psychology field, it's to figure out what's wrong with you. It's so true. It is so true. But what they don't mention is that um, all of the schooling, all of the, the education and the research, like it does not do a darn thing to prepare you for actual life. And I remember feeling that way when I was in my late twenties and I went through a clinical depression and I, I was, you know, laying there on the bathroom floor crying and thinking to myself, the textbooks didn't help me. Knowing, knowing the symptoms, knowing, you know, the, the reasons behind, none of that helped me. Um, and I, you know, I've realized that again, I, when I went, I, I early forties and I was working full time with an animal rescue. I was running my own, uh, content writing business. I was volunteering for, you know, six different boards and different organizations. My parents were getting older and I was taking care of them more. And it, it felt like there was a demand on every second of my day plus some. And I remember just working, you know, these 16 to 18 hour days, these ridiculous days trying to honestly make ends meet. Cause if you're in the nonprofit world, not a lot of money there. And, um, you know, I, I, I just kept getting worse. I, I just kept getting, um, more and more behind with my workload, with finances, um, with sleep. And it kind of culminated one day. I was, you know, I was driving down the road and um, I saw those oncoming headlights. It was dusk and people's headlights were starting to come on. And I was like, you know, man, if I just crossed over that median, this could all be over in a second. And I mean, it scared the crud out of me. <laughs> I, I really, I had never thought about suicide before. I didn't want to hurt anybody else for sure. And I didn't want to leave my, my dogs and my parents and, you know, without my help. And I pulled over the side of the road and I, I just cried. I, I, you know, tried to calm myself down. And um, I realized in that moment, something really had to give that there was something majorly wrong. And um, took a couple 
took took about a month off for my mental health and cleared my plate of everything and uh and then sat back and watched it pile back up and fill back up and um oh i'll go into that more detail later but i realized at that point that i just had no boundaries i didn't know how to say no to all of the requests and demands on my time um so even though i cleared it off it just all came back with a vengeance and um I found myself in another in another challenge and realized that boundaries were the answer. And this is extremely powerful. We're going to take a commercial break. Stay right there. Don't go anywhere. Don't go anywhere. We will be right back after this. Hello everyone, welcome back to Fit Bites with Adriana. Today we're diving deep into a topic that is buzzing in the world of health and beauty, collagen, especially its benefits for combating hair loss and promoting hair health. Now let's start with the basics. Collagen is the most abundant protein in our body, crucial for maintaining the structure of skin, hair, nails, and joints. As we age, our body's natural collagen production declines, which can contribute to hair thinning and loss. That's where collagen supplements come in, including collagen peptides, hydrolyzed collagen, and liquid collagen. These supplements are thought to help boost your body's collagen levels and provide the amino acids necessary for hair growth and strength. Collagen peptides, for instance, are small proteins produced from breaking down full-length collagen molecules. They are easier for the body to absorb, which means they can potentially help strengthen the hair shaft and improve hair texture. Liquid collagen, another popular form, is often praised for its high absorption rate. Users report not only improvements in their hair's appearance, but also enhanced skin elasticity and reduced joint pain. Now, incorporating collagen supplements into your diet might help mitigate hair thinning by providing your follicles with the protein that they need to produce healthy hair. You can add collagen powder to smoothies, coffee, or even water, just as examples. However, it's not just about supplements. Protecting your hair starts with good scalp care. Regularly massage your scalp to stimulate circulation. Be mindful of the hair products that you use. Choose those that nurture the scalp and the hair. And as always, manage your stress as it can directly impact your overall hair health. Stay tuned for more Fit Bites. And remember, healthy hair growth starts from the inside out. And boosting your collagen intake is just one piece of the puzzle. Here's to your health and to your hair. Hi, I'm Emily and I live in Colorado with a very active lifestyle where my family and I race horses and rodeo. I'm happy to share an amazing technology that has changed my life. Six months ago, my friend introduced me to a wearable nanocrystal technology that is activated through phototherapy or your own body's light. With this technology, this little patch is able to increase the copper GHK peptides in your body which can reactivate stem cells. The beautiful thing about stem cells is that it goes in your body and fixes whatever's broken. If you would like to experience more energy, better sleep, weight loss, or countless other benefits, click on the QR code below to find the younger, healthier you with this affordable technology that I have seen change hundreds of lives.
Welcome back to The Health Revolution. My guest today, Cheryl Green, author, speaker, the how to say no expert. And we are talking about healthy boundaries and the impact it has on our, our mental health and our surroundings. And before the break, Cheryl was sharing with us her journey into a, in a navigating through times where she really had to take a pause, had a had time to hold space for her mental health, and she began to reestablish boundaries. And Cheryl, so picking up where we last left off, tell me the in terms of reflecting and then the growth from there. You mentioned that you took time off, you took a month off so that you could um, reset and regroup. And then uh, what happened after that? Yeah, so, well, the, the constant crying slowed down, so that was good. Uh, hey. <laughs> you know, I had, I had gotten to that point when you're you're really raw, that you just, everything makes me cry. I know a lot of people like that. And um, I needed to kind of, like you said, reset. I needed to find that, that balance back in my life. And um, I did, I, I, I took a month off. I stopped working with the animal rescue. Um, that was a, a hard boundary for me. And I kind of doubled down on my own business. At the same time, I started dating my now husband. So things changed drastically in a very short period of time. Um, but what didn't change was people were still coming to me for things. And um, one of my best friends, uh, she was the president of the local speakers organization at the time. And she came up to me one day and she's like, Cheryl, I want you to be the incoming president. So you'll follow me next year. And, you know, when every uh, cell in your body is screaming, no, don't do it. Bad idea. And I said to her, I was like, you know, I, mm, I gotta, I, I have to think about it. I'm not ready to give you an answer yet. And I consulted everybody. I spoke to my husband I, or my soon to be husband, cause we were planning a wedding at that point. I spoke to mentors. I spoke to friends and ultimately the voice that screamed the loudest was the people pleaser in me. And it was the one that didn't want to turn my friend down, didn't want to disappoint her. Didn't matter that at that point, my parents were, again, needing even more, uh, more of my help. They were even sicker. And I'm planning a wedding, which if anybody's ever done, you know, takes a little bit of time. And it, it took me a couple of weeks before she came back and she was like, I need an answer this Friday. And I was like, mm, okay, I'll do it. And the second I said it, the the moment that it came out of my mouth, I was like, mm, wrong decision. You know, she had, she had said, oh, it's only about an hour's worth of work each week. Sure. And the emails started coming and the meeting um, invitations started coming. And this was before, I mean, really, we had even started the year. And I was already, I was just regretting it. I was like, this is a terrible plan. You know, oh, it's, it's something, there's something to be said about besties pushing you in uh -huh. the direction that you need to go because, yes. you know, sometimes it's a very good thing and it's a good trajectory to experience for sure. So uh, talk, let's talk about the fact that you're a, obviously a speaker, but then you authored this book that I'd like for us to dive into. You had me at no, and let's have a, let's begin to really uh, showcase what this is. So talk to us about how you got to write the book and, uh, and, and yes, the backstory behind it. Yeah. So, um, a couple of weeks after saying yes to my friend, I realized I was sitting on a plane and trying to make a decision as to whether or not I was going to move forward with this. And a, a mentor had said, it's not terrible. If you back out now, it's terrible. If you go through all the training and take that spot away from someone else. And then you back out eight months from now. And I was sitting on a plane, my Kindle stopped working and I was actually forced to listen to my own thoughts and realized like, okay, one, I need to step away because this is not the time for me to serve. And I'm not going to be able to serve in the way the chapter deserves. And I need to learn some boundaries and I need to teach some boundaries. I realized how many other people, you know, have 
the same people pleasing tendencies that I've had. And um, I actually outlined about 60% of the books sitting on that airplane and came home, did the research, consulted every therapist and coach I could and drew on my, my, you know, education and finished the book. So who does this speak to the most? The people pleasers, the over givers, um, the people out there who find it difficult to say no, who believe that they are on this earth to make everybody else's life easier and put their needs aside. And the people that just give too much of themselves to the point where there's nothing left for them. And one of the things I wanted to do, I wanted to dive, just do a little quick snippet of, of one of the, an area in the book, chapter eight, you wrote, and super quick, I just want to share here that our lives are intertwined with others. There are people that come into our lives for five minutes, others that will be in our lives for five weeks or five months, and some will even grace our existence for five years or five decades. The closer we are to someone, the more important they are to us and therefore the more difficult it may be to set boundaries with them and then you go on to say you talk about boundaries and your ability to set them are based on your relationship with the individual and the potential outcome of your decision speak a little bit to that yeah so if you you think about the people that you interact with every day and there's that person at the grocery store who's bagging your groceries poorly, um, all the way to your mom, you know, and you've got, and there's every level in between. If you set a boundary, if you disappoint, if you uh, say no to the grocery bagger, okay, it's going to feel icky for a couple of seconds because you're not used to it, but ultimately who cares? You know, it, it's not going to, there's not going to be any fallout from the situation. Um, so there's, there's very low, low risk, low danger. On the other side of that spectrum, you've got mom and well, you love her theoretically and you want to keep her in your life and you want to maintain a relationship. So there's much higher stakes in saying no, in standing up for yourself, in, um, uh, I don't want to say letting letting them down, but refusing to be what what mom's expecting you to be. There is a, a big difference in the the danger level there, um, which is why it's for some people it's damn near impossible to um, set boundaries with anyone. Okay, and you know that exists, and that's okay. Um, but for some, you know, not a really big deal saying no to the grocery person. Um, huge, nearly impossible deal to say no to mom. So that relationship matters. And so when we talk about relationships also, uh, talk a little bit about the work environment, because this is an area where so very many people spend a good, a good amount of time in their day in the work environment. How do you set healthy boundaries when there are obligations and responsibilities and you have to interact with other people to get the job done? Yeah, so communication is honestly the, the, biggest, um, the biggest tool here um, because yes, you are there to do a job. Um, for most people, it is within an allotted time period during the day or during the week. And what do we do when those those expectations that are placed upon us expand beyond that time. You know, maybe you're not in a job that's on call and yet you're getting phone calls at eight o'clock, nine o'clock at night. So understanding the expectations that your, your manager, your boss, or that you have on someone else, understanding those expectations being really clear on what you need to do, what is in your job description, and not taking on other people's. You know, that's a huge, um, I didn't realize when I was going through my codependency journey, I didn't realize that my codependency went to work with me as well. You know, and I'd, 
I, I'd, I'd have this, there was always the one coworker that didn't want to do her work. And I was like, oh, it's okay. I got it. You know, I'm martyring all over the place. And I, I want to look amazing to my boss because then I'll get a, a promotion and then I'll, I'll, you know, the money will follow and all of those things. Um, but the boss never noticed because this other lady's work was getting done and I was actually doing it first sometimes. So I was slipping a little bit in my performance. Um, so being clear, you know, what are the expectations? What is your role? And if you finish that in time and you want to help somebody else, great. Um, if you actually just like to enjoy breathing for a few minutes, maybe do that. Um, but you know, talk to your, talk to your manager, talk to your boss. Um, sometimes it's just a matter of being honest and saying, there's too much on my plate. You know, what would you like me to do first? Um, what would be okay if it didn't get done? Because within my eight hours, my nine hours, my whatever your time is, um, I'm not magical and I can't get that all done. And sometimes your boss is going to be human and they're going to understand that and they're going to help you and work with you. And sometimes they're going to see you as a commodity. And that's a great time to uh, maybe start looking for another place of, of work that actually appreciates you. You have another publication that I would like to bring up. Talk a little bit about this particular coloring book. Let's talk, let's talk in detail about color your way to healthy boundaries. What, what does this entail? Yeah. So, you know what, I, I took some quotes from the book and, um, I, I did a really pretty, pretty like mandala style, um, artwork in there and someone, uh, somebody that bought it said it's like you know how you have all those motivational quotes stuck to your mirror yeah. imagine having it in front of you for 45 minutes to an hour at a time while you color and release stress and that's what it is coloring is so um so healing for for people and being able to just kind of like get into this zen moment where you're you don't have to worry about everything. And it, it's, um, it's a meditation for people that can't meditate and for people that can. Um, and then you've got quotes from the book and random things that have come out of my mouth on podcasts. <laughs> and it's just that reinforcement that um, boundaries, setting boundaries and upholding them is work. It is, you know, it's, it's much easier to go right back to your like, okay, I'll do whatever you say kind of, you know, attitude. Um, but when you do it and you reinforce it and you build those boundary muscles and you keep practicing it, man, life gets so much better. And this coloring book is all about reinforcing. Have you colored it yourself? I have. Yeah. <laughs> I, I realized like after I'd gotten it, I, after it came out, like a few months later, I was like, I haven't actually colored my coloring book. So, um, yeah. And it's, you know, it, it's really, it's just really fun for me to like focus in. And you know, those days where you just literally can't, mm -hmm. you just can't with life, you know? And, um, that those are my coloring days. <laughs> Fantastic. We're going to continue on, but first we're going to go ahead and take a break right here. Stay put. We'll be right back. Don't go anywhere. We will be right back after this. Thank you so much for watching The Health Revolution. Our show is growing and it's all thanks to viewers like you. No matter how you found us, please hit the subscribe button so we can stay connected and continue to deliver amazing content to you. Life is so fragile, and we're constantly reminded just how fragile life can be, especially when we, or a loved one, is told we have cancer. Cancer survivor myself, I can tell you, we still feel very alone in this journey. There's a study that's been shown that patients who are socially isolated have a worse prognosis have a worse outcome than patients who are socially interconnected. O Buddies for Life is a non-profit cancer support group for those whose life has been impacted by cancer. Humor, hope, heart, and hugs. Humor, hope, heart, hugs, and a whole lot of love. Share this with your friends and family and support this community in every way you can. No one should face cancer alone. I am a chemo buddy for life. 
We are a Buddies Network. No one does cancer alone. Be a buddy. And we are all here for you as a community of love. We are Chemo Buddies for life. And if you've heard three words, you have cancer, for yourself or someone else, you belong with us at Chemo Buddies for life. Healing through connections. We can take our own health into our own hands, okay? So we'll kind of expand on that. So I take a lot of vitamins every day. Long before I started this business, my wife has had me taking my vitamin C, my B complexes, amino acids every single solitary day, and I still do, even though I still do IVs as well. But when you take vitamins orally, you get 15 to 20% of them. Some people get less because they have autoimmune issues. Some people will have a lot of inflammation issues, whatever the case may be, so they don't get the absorption that they need to be getting. So they don't get their immune system built up. Doing the mobile IVs, I'm able to take your immune system, I'm able to naturally boost it. Welcome back to the Health Revolution. Cheryl Green is my guest today. She's a speaker, author, and the how to say no expert. And we've been talking about creating healthy boundaries and what does that mean? And uh, as we were diving into that before the break, we delved into the books. And now I'd like to talk about upcoming events of what you have going on. So the embellishment of what you're sharing and the value of setting healthy boundaries is expanding. How are you creating reach? What does this look like? What do you have on the calendar for those who would love to experience creating healthy boundaries? Yeah, so I'm super excited. My uh, Boundaries and Balance Retreat is coming up uh, September 19th to the 21st. And um, look, the, the book is a great jumping off point. If you've never dealt with boundaries before, you've never had them, um, or you kind of need a refresher, it is a great jumping off point. But like I said, it's about building the muscles and learning more and diving deeper and figuring out exactly what's holding you back, what's preventing you from setting boundaries. Um, so this this retreat is the opportunity to it's virtual, so it doesn't have to take a chunk out of your out of your world with with traveling and everything. But virtual retreat where you're going to be surrounded by other people that are on this boundary journey. And you're going to have a guide to really make it personal for you. What do your boundaries look like? Um, what are your values? What, um, how do you want to be treated? And like I said earlier, you know, boundaries are not a one size fits all. Everybody is going to have um, their own um, wants and needs and desires. And that's what we really were going to get to is who are you? What's holding you back from having the life that you want, from setting the boundaries that you want? And we're going to tackle that. And then we're going to talk about, um, you know, how to decide if you actually want to do something. You know, so many of us are, are stuck in this. Well, I have to say yes, that we never actually learned how to make those intentional decisions. You know, and finally, we're going to learn how to communicate because Having that, no, I don't want to do something or no, I can't help you with something. Having that conversation can be really scary when you're first starting out. Um, and you need to learn the techniques and the tools on how to communicate and then how to uphold it afterwards um, because people are going to push. Most people do not like change and um, while ultimately the people that love you are going to accept this new, healthier version of you and it's going to make your relationship stronger, um, you're going to have to uphold those boundaries. You're going to have to keep keep putting your foot down. And um, we go through all of that. So, you know, my, my goal is to help people that have dealt with that people-pleasing gene their entire life, you know, that have... Um, 
I have always found it hard to say no, to stand up for themselves, to make their priorities a priority. So if that's something that sounds, you know, like it could be helpful to actually put your needs first um, for once, um, then check it out. It's going to be an amazing, amazing weekend. Now, is it for both? It's both for men and women? And you know, this one's going to be for women. For women. Okay, to clarify. Okay. Yes. Yeah, I want to create a safe space for, for women to address these, these challenges. And how far, how far reaching can those who are, who are discovering about the retreat, are they able, is it, is it only uh, North America or is it globally or what does that look like? If you want to be up at two o'clock in the morning, I bring on the other countries. <laughs> you know, I, I, like I said, women, women have challenges, um, and other, other cultures may be a little bit different, but we can all, all benefit from healthier boundaries. What are you finding are upcoming trends for, for breaking through boundary related issues? What are you noticing that has an uptick that, you know, in terms of society, in terms of women and, and how, how are you, what kind of patterns are happening for breakthroughs? What are you noticing? Yeah, so I, I think, like I said, we're we're talking about mental health more. It, it's becoming less taboo. So being able to have those conversations of, hey, I'm overwhelmed, I'm burned out, I'm getting depressed, I need help. Like there's more of that conversation, there's more of that willingness for other people to listen and to support. And I, I think as as more people um, recognize those those boundary issues, and I think it is it is becoming a very hot topic. Um, and women are more um, willing to help one another now, I think, than than in the past. There is more of a like let's lift everybody up kind of kind of wave going on. Are you noticing that across generations? The language is is pretty similar in wanting to to really create healthy boundaries. Is it is is there any generation that you're noticing that's struggling in in this area, or are you finding that no, it's pretty universal? We're we're all wanting the same things. I I, I have to laugh when you said that because I'm a I'm a grandma now. I I became an Insta stepmom and an Insta grandma when I got married, and my granddaughter. I don't know if anything comes out of her mouth that isn't no right now. She's at that like two, three-year-old stage. And I was like, this girl is going to have no problem setting boundaries. <laughs> um, so I think, you know what, as the, the older generations, um, many of them have learned this the hard way. Many of them are still struggling with it. Um, but I do, I, I meet a lot of like 60 year old somewhere around there that they're like oh yeah no i figured that out it's like okay yeah no that's that's bound to happen if you're you know dealing with it and if you're unhappy enough to kind of dive in um i am seeing that the the challenges are pretty strong 30s 40s and um i i think there's actually going to be less for the younger generations because they are speaking up for themselves. They are saying what they need. They're not putting up with a job that doesn't appreciate them for 40 years. So I'd like to think that, that that's going to get better. And as you know, my generation and above and right below me, as, as we learn boundaries, we're going to be able to teach those to our kids and to our grandkids and, you know, move, move that along. So I think it's getting, I think it's getting better. That's, that's me being the eternal optimist. <laughs> powerful, powerful statement. We're going to take a quick commercial break. Don't go anywhere. Don't go anywhere. We will be right back after this.
Welcome back to The Health Revolution. Welcome back, everybody. My guest today, Cheryl Green. We're talking about how to set healthy boundaries in the name of sound mental health. She is author, speaker, the how to say no expert. Cheryl, where can we find you on the internet, on social media? Where are you? Yeah, I'm everywhere. I'm omnipresent. Um, you can go to my website, CherylGreenSpeaks.com. Cheryl is with an S, as you can see. Um, I am on YouTube. I'm on LinkedIn. I, sometimes I'm on Instagram. And uh, <laughs> it's one of those, like, I have to keep reminding myself to be on there, but I'm there. So, um, but yeah, you can always connect with me through my website and I'm here as I was writing this morning and taking some great pictures. I've been trying to get my dogs to answer my emails for me and they're having no part of it. So you'll get me. You know, if you figure that out, please, please share with us because we, we have dogs that could do that as well. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. So if there's one thing that you would want to leave in terms of a message to the viewer who is really struggling with healthy boundaries, what do you, what would you want to tell them? Yeah, I would say you have the right, you know, a lot of times we don't believe that we have the right. We haven't been given permission to um, stand up for ourselves, to um, seek out our, uh, to have our needs met, to even have needs. Um, and to say no when no is the answer that's right for your truth. Um, so you've got permission now, whatever whatever date you're watching this on, um, you officially have permission to say no. Um, now it's just learning how, and that's the easy part. What do you see for yourself coming up in the future? We talked about the events, we have the books are out. What yeah. else is in store for Cheryl Green? Yeah, so keynotes, more workshops, um, more retreats. And if anybody out there is listening, I want to be on the Drew Barrymore show. <laughs> she needs to read my book and she needs to interview me on her show. And so you know where to find me if you know her. I figure somebody, someone's cousin is like her dog walker or whatever. Like there's, you know, seven degrees. So Drew Barrymore. Yes, or six degrees of Kevin Bacon. We'll, we'll, we'll somehow make this work. So Cheryl Green, thank you so much for being here, the How to Say No expert. Thank you for sharing such valuable information, especially as we are really redefining ourselves, who we are and where we see ourselves going. Thank you for your time. Thank you for having me. Yes, and for all our viewers, of course, you can find us on the web. We are at thehealthrevolutiontv.com. You can find more show information. You can subscribe to our newsletter if you have any show ideas you'd love for us to cover so that we can deliver. Feel free to send us a note. Also in the upper left-hand corner of the screen, you'll see our QR code. If it's easier for you to catch that way, please feel free to do so. And then as always, we are on E360 TV on the Achieve TV channel every Tuesday and Thursday. 10 a.m. Pacific, 1 p.m. Eastern. That is all the time that we have today. Until next time, please take care of yourselves. We'll see you soon.